All right, so today I wanted to talk to you about another fabulous Chinese Vizio. I'll probably get a lot of people saying that they're U.S. made sets, but if you look very closely back here at the uh, little model tag, you can clearly say made in China. They do have an office here in California, but um, for the most part it's made by a company in China called Amtran. Anyhow, problem with this set today is the Vizio logo lights up normally when you hit the power button, so I'm going to press power. Now, uh, Vizio logo does light up white, which is a good sign. I don't know if you can see it, but the backlight did come on. Sometimes on these sets to check and see if the backlight's on, you can look down. You can see the light in the back of the panel there as I look through the vents in the back of the TV. So that's always a good test to see if the backlight's on. Uh, but I get no video. I get no blue screen whatsoever. And one of the problems is when I go to hit the power button again, I can't turn the TV back off. It is stuck on. So I'm going to pull the back off real quick and uh, we'll address that stuck on issue on this set. One thing I wanted to show you in the disassembly process of this TV, um, if you, this is the stand that goes on it right here. Uh, if you try to take the screws out of it, I've got the set laid down obviously, but if you try to take these screws out of it while it's still standing up, uh, there's no safety retainers on this set to keep it from falling over, so uh, basically the stand will just come off and the set will fall right down on the floor. So make sure you lay the set down first and then take the eight screws out of the base to prevent this thing from just falling face down and uh, if, if it falls face down it'll probably break the LCD panel or possibly some of the fluorescent backlights. Uh, just a note during disassembly. So on this set, I've got the back off of it here, and um, the main board on this particular model, this is an early Vizio, one of the first uh, LCD sets they brought to the market that uh, uh, was not an LG TV as their plasmas were. Um, you got to remove all the screws from the jack, uh, the nut on the RF connector, uh, the two nuts from the uh, VGA input, remove all the screws, there are several screws all the way around the outside of this little cover. You got to take the cover off and kind of fold it back sideways. And now we can get access to the main board here and I'll show you some uh, key test points to check uh, to find out is it a uh, easily repairable problem or is it just a um, something such as a uh, bad processor. So let's go ahead and start checking. Okay so with the set off and the set plugged in, you can check the voltages on these two fuses. You should have five volts on one, which we do. Check it on both sides to make sure it's good. The other one should be near zero uh, because it's the 12 volt supply. So I'll go ahead and turn the TV on. With the set on, we should have 12 volts on both sides of the, of the uh, second little gold fuse, five volts on the other one backlights on it's running still can't turn the TV off so the things we're going to be checking move the voltmeter here and um, we're going to be checking the voltage on some of these regulators right here this regulator right here has uh, 12 volts going into it the center pin on this one is ground so it should have zero and the right hand side pin is the output pin, should have 5 volts on it. You can also tell the voltage by looking at the regulator itself. It'll actually tell you the number on it. I believe the number on that one is a 7805, which 78 means it's a positive regulator, and the 05 means it's a 5 volt output regulator. That one's working good. The next thing we're going to address is um, they're kind of hard to see, but uh, like here's one right here. This is another one. These are smaller little lower voltage regulators. Some of these are fixed voltage regulators. Most of these are adjustable voltage regulators. And let's just pick this one because it's in the frame. I can't really zoom in any closer on it than that. Um, 
But on the tab on this one, it's the output voltage. So there's the output, 3.28. So that's a 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, this pin on this far side is always the input voltage. It needs to be higher, 5.1 volts. The center pin is connected to the tab. So you can see 3.3 volts there. The far left hand pin, as you're looking at with the pins down, is the adjustment pin. And you should always see about 1.2 volts lower on this pin, 2.0, uh, versus 3.3 volts on the outside. So it's about 1.2 volts, very close, 1.2 to 1.25 volts. That's a good working regulator. Um, I believe the problem on this set is this little regulator right here because I've got 5 volts on the input. I have 2.0 on the output, yet on the adjustment pin I've got 1.2 volts. So because of that, there's a second little regulator right here. And it takes the output of the first one, as you can see it's the exact same voltage, and it should regulate it down even lower than that. It should regulate it down to about 1.2 volts because it's only got 0 0.021 on the adjustment pin. But as you can see, I've only got 0.997 volts on that one, 9 tenths of a volt. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this regulator right here. It's kind of hard to see because the capacitor is in the way. But it's U32 on this board. The part number on the regulator is a 1117. Um, you can search for those on places like DigiKey or on eBay. All right, here's a close-up of that regulator, as you can see. Uh, AMC1117 is the number that's on it. So you can search for those keywords, but the main thing to remember is just the 1117. Uh, some of them will say 1117-3.3 or 1.2, 1.8, 2.5. That's the output fixed voltage. And if you have one that has a like a dash 3.3 or dash 2.5, then the far left hand pin as we're viewing it from as we are right now is the adjustment pin and it's going to be grounded. So that's a fixed output regulator. These are adjustable which means these two little resistors that you can see right here R30 and R32 uh, they connect directly to that pin which is now in the center of the picture and they are the adjustment resistors. They're the ones that actually fix the regulator at a certain voltage. It's a uh, voltage divider network they have set up. So I'm going to go ahead and change this real quick and we'll see what kind of results we get. Just because I know people are going to ask me, um, here's the part number uh, from DigiKey 497-1229-1-ND uh, LD1117 ASTR, IC regulator, low dropout, positive one app adjustable, SOT223 is the case style. You go to digikey.com or you can call this phone number right here uh, to order these parts from them directly. The only difference, like I said, the other regulator said AMC1117, these just simply say 1117A. So that's really the only difference between them. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to heat up the pins on this little regulator IC, apply some solder to them. I'm just going to get them all molten all at the same time. It'll just take a few seconds. Put a screwdriver down here in the corner. Once they all get molten, you'll be able just to scoot the regulator right out of the way. You can use some solder wick or whatever to clean the pads off. I have a solder sucker, so I'm just going to vacuum up the solder. So I'm just going to place the new one right down there. going to put a little solder right on the tip of my soldering iron and I'm going to apply some pressure to it 
Oops, it turned a little bit. Try to get it straightened up here. Some solder around the center pin, that's the heat sink, so make sure it goes up underneath it there. Oops. There we go. So that one's all soldered in place. Now we'll go ahead and test it. Okay, now we've got the new regulator in there, so let's look at the voltages again. 5 volts on the input. Now we've got 3.3 .3 on the output. About 2.05 on the adjustment pin on that one. And remember this one over here, we had 9 tenths before. We have 1.2 volts on the output. So that looks much better now than we had before. And I've got the set laying down so I can't tell if it's working correctly or not but I can turn it off. I just turned it back off so I think that's gonna fix the problem. Alright so we got our TV all back together here. Let's go ahead and hit the power button. Logo turns white. But I don't want them hopping around while I'm trying to write. <laughs> that looks good. Everything's working now. Set does turn off now. So I'd say we got a good solid repair on this one. Back on again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching. Hopefully, this will keep yet another TV out of the landfill.